Hello, this is Diane Elkins with Artisan eLearning and eLearningUncovered.com. This webcast is designed to show you how to use variables to keep a running score in a game in Lectora. A very common game construct is to ask a series of questions, with the students getting points for answering the questions right, and possibly losing points if they answer the question wrong. Let's try this out with a football game. Here we have a game where if the student answers a question correctly, the home team gets seven points. If the student answers a question incorrectly, the visiting team gets seven points. There are three key elements you need to set up a game like this. First, you need to have a way to ask a question. These questions can be simple like the one you see here, or complex scenarios. You can just use regular buttons like you see here, or you can use the question wizard. The next thing you need is a variable in which to track the score. In this game, we are actually keeping two scores, so we need two variables. Finally, you need a place to display the score. In this case, this is done with text boxes on a scoreboard graphic. If the score will be used throughout a series of slides, you can put the display elements at the title or chapter level. I already have two questions and the scoreboard set up. Now let's add the logic. The first thing you do is create the variable to hold the score. To do that, I click the Variable Manager button, and then Add, and add my first variable, which will be underscore score home. I add the underscore at the beginning because that puts it higher in the alphabetized list, which is handy later. I want my initial value to be zero, and I do not need to retain the variable value between sessions. Click OK, and add another one, underscore, score, visitor. Again, zero, OK, and close. Now I have a place to keep the scores. Next, I'll have the question add points. On this first question, the correct answer is no. So on the No button, I'll add an action to add seven points to the correct score. So on mouse click, I want to modify the variable because this is the correct answer. I want that to be the home score. And instead of setting the contents, what I want to do is add to it a value of seven. So if they click the No button, which is the correct answer, the home score will get seven extra points. Apply. Now the incorrect answer is yes. So there I will add an action that on mouse click I want to modify the variable of the visitor score also by adding to that variable seven points. Next I need to run an action that displays the score to the student. I already have two text boxes set up one for the home score, one for the visitor score, and I have them labeled here properly in the panel. So now I go back to my yes and my no buttons. I'll add a new action. What I do to display the variable is a change contents action. I want to change the contents of that home text box to be the value of my score home variable. Apply. And then I'll do the same thing on my yes button for the visitor score. Again, since this is the wrong answer, I'll add a new action. And that action will be to change the contents of the visitor's text box to be the visitor score. Now, there's something very important you have to pay attention to here, and that's the order of your actions. Right now, it is set up to display the variable before I add the seven points. So I need to rearrange these to make sure that they're in the proper order. Now let's see how it works. I answer the question correctly, and the home team gets seven points. Let me reset, try it again, answer the question incorrectly, and the visiting team gets seven points. 
Now I'd probably want to do a few more things such as show some text-based feedback, maybe I could play a cheer or a boo sound, and I'd probably want to make the buttons disappear after a single click so that the student can't run up the score just by clicking the same button over and over again. The two main things to remember when you're setting this up is to make sure your actions are in the right order and also to make sure you always add a change contents action every time you modify the variable. So if you modify the variable but don't add a new action to change the contents it will not display the new number. So every time you modify a variable you add another action that will display that new number. Now once you get the basic logic figured out you can apply the same concept to any number of game types. Baseball, golf, bowling, really anything you can think of. Enjoy!